of space and just watch it as it does this majestic spin. Hey guys, Marman2468 here, and today we're playing Kerbal Space Program, and uh, I've got something pretty awesome to show you guys. It's uh, the spin wheel in Kerbal Space Program. So, uh, so let's let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in our uh, space center. Let's go into the vehicle assembly building, and let's load up my design for the spin wheel where is it here it is spin wheel mark one now this was the uh the first design just a pretty simple concept right i put the uh command module on top for a jet and then i made like these uh, i put the the new solid fuel thrusters i put one in the center and then three going outwards but the last one i put i kind of put slanted which you can do by holding shift and using wasd and uh, so let's see how this actually works. Uh, now, the reason I did this, the idea I had behind it was uh, that if if this if the craft is you know v pretty symmetrical, let, uh, let's launch here. Press T for SAS. Press space to start, and there goes the launches. So anyway, the idea I had was if it's symmetrical, uh, you can actually have it stabilize just by having it spin and so that's what I did because originally I wasn't trying to make a spin wheel I was trying to make a to make like a simple rocket to go to uh, to get to an orbit right so this was the design I made then I did like this and it looked pretty cool so this was my mark one spin wheel but don't worry because there's five other marks to show you um, it's just time warp right here. As you can see, it's really, really stable, and uh, it's actually having re-entry effects while going out of the atmosphere because we're going at very high speeds, and we're still in the atmosphere. We're still at 25 kilometers. Uh, and there we go. They finished. The solid fuel thruster is finished. Spinning pretty quick, but it's... Uh, we were going at, I think we reached 2,000 meters per second. So let's see how high this actually reaches. And there we go, we entered space. Uh, it slowed down its spin by quite a bit. But it still has 1,600 meters per second, so let's just continue. And actually... Oh... There we go, 200. Let's just go into the orbit map real quick. And we see our uh, apoapsis is approaching at 389,000 meters. So 389 uh, kilometers, 30 seconds. So yeah, that, that was pretty cool. It worked quite well. There we go. Approaching back to Earth or Kerbin, whatever you want to call it. On some mountains, re-entry effect, you can actually turn off SAS. Uh, and yeah, nothing, nothing really happens. This guy just dies. So that is, there we go. <laughs> that is the spin wheel Mark I. But if we return to vehicle assembly, we can actually see if we load this, we can see our spin wheel mark 2 load. Now this was a bit different. I uh, kind of uh, added a lot more solid fuel thrusters. And I, instead of just spinning the last one, I spun all of them by one. And so this is, you get this like kind of crazy looking contraption. And then I just attached these... Uh, I don't know what they're called. Things that, that keep them steady before launch. So here we go, spin wheel mark two launch. All right, so uh, here we are. This is, uh, it has a pretty weird launch because there's no support struts, so it kind of is pretty wobbly. Turn on SAS even though you really don't need to and uh, press space and just watch it 
as it does this majestic spin. So this started spinning much faster than the other one. And if you kind of spin the mouse, you can kind of keep up with it. Looks pretty weird. Um, but like this, this is not even half of the spin speed it'll reach by the end. Uh, so as you can see, it's starting to speed up by quite a bit. Um, if we go into this Kerbin's view, IVA, you can see it's pretty crazy. There goes the sun. Uh, yeah, going at 400 meters a second. As you can see, the, the Navi ball is going crazy. 500 meters per second. Okay, we're getting the re-entry effects again. Um, as you can see, the, the solid... F yep, there we go. They, uh... I guess the speed was too much for them to handle. Uh, and there we go. We, we ran out of, of uh, fuel. But we're still going up. Still spinning. Uh, this doesn't reach anywhere near as high as the other one did. I don't even think it reaches 50 kilometers. I'm not sure, though. Oh, it might do. It definitely won't reach space. Alright, so here we are approaching back to Kerbin. Uh, this one only made it like 50, 50 kilometers. And there we go. This one, again, I forgot to add parachutes, but whatever. This guy is going to have... Well, actually, he's going to have just as bad of a landing as the other one, but... Uh, this one is a lot slower. The last one crashed at 100 meters per second. This one's on 85. 86. But we did do some even better improvements if we go here and load Mark three. Whoops, I accidentally saved it. Load Mark three, which is right here. Load it. And here we have Spin Wheel Mark three. So right here, not much has changed. Although, there we go. We added another six solid fuel thrusters. Uh, and so what the point of these are is to give an extra boost, you know, once these are about to break off, these give an, give an extra boost to spin this even faster than what it's already spinning. As you can see, they, they activate after these ones. So let's uh, launch the Spin Wheel Mark III. All right, Spin Wheel Mark III, and just as wobbly a takeoff as the last one. SAS on and launch. Uh, there's a lot more weight on these edge solid thrusters, these long ones, so they actually extend out a lot more, which gives an even crazier effect. Yeah, this one, this is a proper spin wheel. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like a star with six points. Yeah, as you can see, they're extending out a lot more, but uh, you, I'll press them now. There we go. And now it's spinning a lot faster. Looks even crazier. One of them actually came off. IVA is, uh, yeah, IVA is pretty crazy. Uh, they actually, wow, they actually came off and tore off. Oh, okay, that was weird. That never happened before. But those uh, six solid fuel thrusters came off and tore off the edge solid fuel thruster. And now everything else came off. And so, now he's alone, but at least he's not spinning, right? All right, it's about to break this one really did not go high it went so low that it the earth didn't even get a chance to move around it and we landed in the same exact spot so uh well we have something even cooler than that mark four 
Now Mark IV was kind of a fail, which is why I have a Mark V and VI. Mark IV uh, was kind of like a test. So yeah, as you can see, I added some uh, some struts because it wasn't holding at all. And what we did here, yeah, we added some struts to try and make it go. But really nothing, no, no, nothing extra was added. The only thing that I changed was I changed the middle solid fuel thruster with a one of the smaller ones. And so the idea of that was that once all of these finished, this one would just like uh, shoot out, but it doesn't work. And uh, I took this idea and I made it into the spin wheel Mark V, which is right here. Load it. And here we go, the spin wheel Mark V. Uh, it looks pretty awesome and finally I remembered to add parachutes so basically what this does is uh, has parachutes here to kind of keep it steady once it starts wobbling but what it does is once it starts wobbling and everything breaks this decouples this little part right here here's the where is it here it decouples and these start spinning really even faster than these and so uh, it just shoots up well, that was the plan anyway. So let's see how this works. Um, it's pretty crazy. Now what you can do is you can either uh, activate the parachutes as soon as you take off for like maximum drag and that'll keep it slow. But what we'll do is activate them later on so they won't actually deploy fully. So they'll have a smaller drag. But yeah, as you can see, the view is still the same as always. The view from inside, uh, well, it's kind of covered by all the parachutes and solid fuel thrusters. So let's go back outside. Now, um, the parachutes you can activate once you pass three kilometers. It's safe to activate them. Yeah, as you can see, it keeps it stable a little bit more, but not a lot. So then you activate the solid fuel thrusters, and that did not work. <laughs> well, it kind of did. Not really. So as you can see that, now it, it stabilizes again. Once you remove this part, it stabilizes again. But if you don't, it's not stable. I'll retry that, and hopefully it works. Alright, here we are back at 3 kilometers. We'll wait a bit to deploy the parachutes this time. Uh, we'll deploy them now. There we go. Now activate the solid fuel thrusters and launch it. Again, it didn't work. Oh well, at least this time the solid fuel thrusters that stayed on are the two center ones, so it should stay stable. Somewhat stable, at least. We're actually going faster than that this time. Uh, wait, um, do I have three solid fuel thrusters attached? I can't tell. It's spinning so fast. Maybe if we look from the inside. So we have that one and that one. So no, I think only two are actually attached. Go back to... Oh! They ran out. Uh, this one still doesn't... Oh yeah, we did have three. This one still doesn't reach as high as the first... The initial Mark One design. But... Um... I like this idea of having the decoupling and separating it with its own separate solid fuel thrusters. And so that's what I did for the final Mark, Mark 6. So here we go, we're landing, and this time we actually have parachutes. We can go ahead and deploy SAS. We will pull the parachutes, and so Burick Kerman actually saves himself for the first time. Um, Let's, let's deploy them a bit later. I actually have six parachutes because the idea was I was going to have six solid fuel thrusters. And so they're going to be pretty heavy. And so uh, I didn't want to take any chances. But um, obviously not everything went as planned. And so this guy, he saves himself. Anyway, let's go back to the VAB to load up. The final mark, spin wheel mark six, right here. Where is it? Here, spin wheel mark six. Let's load it. 
and so what we've done here was we removed all the parachutes but this one in the middle the small ones we've changed over where the uh, parachutes are to the solid fuel thrusters and we've added a battery pack because I noticed that the battery was running out for the SAS on the command pod so really not much has changed but hopefully enough to uh, keep it stable enough for this to take off and go into orbit or at least to space so let's launch it okay and here we are SAS on and launch so these ones they're pretty small parachutes so you can activate them from the start now they do have quite a bit of drag and there are six of them uh, but what the point of these are is for this to not pick up too much speed in uh, like vertically but to pick up as much speed as possible uh, in spinning wise I guess uh, and they do work pretty well so then once this once it starts spinning out of control like this you can actually wait a little bit more uh, there we go now it's kind of shaking a little it means it's not stable so you press these solid fuel thrusters and take it launch it so there we go Ooh, that separates completely uh, and just pray that you don't get hit by some uh, solid fuel thrusters like that one wow that one is going pretty high I guess the parachute detached from it and so that's why it's going so fast but anyway again getting re-entry effects there we go it wasn't as fast as the other one and the solid fuel thrusters ran out before we actually got a chance to get out of the atmosphere at least the top the bottom part of it but for some reason uh, two of the solid fuel thrusters actually came off which is weird I haven't had that happen so 37 kilometers 38 let's see how high this can actually reach we speed it up um, it's going it went pretty high I guess our goal is a hundred kilometers but I doubt it will reach that yeah it's starting to slow down um, at 65 yeah so I guess 65 is pretty good um, I guess the best one was the first design so uh, simple is better but at least this one made it quite high and the kind of escape module m module what module I mean that actually came off and he manages to save himself once again actually I've, I haven't tested out these parachutes yet parachutes being attached to the solid fuel thrusters so I don't know how that will work hopefully they can actually stay attached to the to the module and uh, save this guy we have the same guy we've had the same guy I think on every single spin wheel even though he dies every time so yeah, as you can see the electric charge actually the electric charge actually stayed but it went below a hundred so this keeps a hundred so yeah it's running out this one is empty I think oh no it's nearly empty so yeah uh, we can actually turn off SAS we don't really need it because it should stay stable and up uh, vertical so once we reach a good enough altitude I can pull the parachutes I guess we'll pull them now there we go and deployed so yeah they worked pretty well if we speed it up uh, he'll land safely hopefully yeah I think they won't, there shouldn't be a problem uh, because I mean the, the modules are pretty the command modules they're pretty uh, durable even though you know when whenever your spacecraft crashes and explodes they usually survive but yeah it survived there we go uh, you can't actually make him EVA because the hatch is obstructed by the solid fuel thrusters so uh, he saved himself but he'll die stuck in the module um, so thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time bye bye